How frequently have you heard of the term godly woman? And what does it signify in practice? Scripture can help us better comprehend this idea of a virtuous woman because only scripture has the authority to describe a godly woman. It may sound very trite or idealistic. Scripture, not an Instagram post, a chat show, or a movie. The Bible describes a godly woman and we must examine what the Bible says. Specifically examine and understand the reason why God created the women. And then we must examine the biblical examples of virtuous women who are mentioned. To put this in another way, a godly woman is one who follows after the heart of God. This indicates that she is aware of her knowledge, that she comprehends who God is, and that she actually seek God. When it comes to the things of the Lord, you can tell that she is starving for knowledge of them. Secondly, she is aware of her identity as a daughter of God. Thirdly, she is aware of her identity in Christ. And finally, she is alignment with the plan and purpose that God has for her life. She never gets lost. She never makes decisions without a purpose. And she is always coming closer and closer to answering the call that God has placed on her life. So those are just three examples of qualities possessed by godly women. She is committed to seeking out the Lord. She is aware of who she is and is not characterized by her profile picture, her followers, or anything like sort. She has finally come to the realization that she is a daughter of God. And this has brought her into alignment. The essential term here is aligned, indicating that she is in accordance with God's desire. But there is more to consider. What does the Bible say about being a godly or virtuous woman? The first woman ever created, Eve, will serve as her beginning point as we examine some of the references to women in the scripture. We can learn more about God's motivations for creating the woman in Genesis chapter 2 because when he was making the creatures, he realized that Adam did not have a helper like him. At that point, he made the decision to create the woman out of one of Adam's ribs. We may conclude with confidence from this that being a helper is one of the traits of a godly woman. This does not imply that God wanted women to be submissive or feeble, but the opposite. He was aware that this invention could not be finished without the participation of a female companion. The fact that the woman was created from one of Adam's ribs means that none of other creatures could have served as helpers to Adam, because none of them were equal to him, comparable to him, or built in God's image. Not his feet, because she shouldn't be walked over, and not his head, because she isn't superior than him. Rather, it should be his rib which denotes that she is next to him. How therefore can you, as women, be godly helpers? Does playing this position require to be married or have children? No, not always. We can all contribute to the well-being of others by putting God and other above ourselves, even though certain of these roles do allow women to demonstrate this trait quite effectively. God comes first, then people, and then us. That certainly qualifies as a virtuous woman. Now, this does not mean that you should ignore yourself, that you shouldn't love yourself, or that you shouldn't take care of yourself. It is more accurate to state that one should love the Lord their God with all of their heart, mind, and soul. And then one should love their neighbor as much as they love themselves. Because helping others is the same as serving others. Becoming a helper means following the example that Jesus set. The following is what the Bible says in Matthew chapter 20, verses 28. Just as the Son of Man did not come to be served, but to serve, and to give his life as a ransom for many. This expands to many additional characteristics that should be present in a woman, such as being loving, compassionate, sympathetic, caring, gentle, humble, unselfish, and obedient. Despite the fact that no woman is flawless and Eve was most definitely not, 
we are able to work toward attaining these characteristics if we are obedient to the Word of God. If we pray and listen to the voice of God, and if we submit ourselves to these practices, it is possible that you're already familiar with Proverbs chapter 31. This is what it says in verse 26. She speaks with wisdom, and faithful instruction is on her tongue. This is the rule that governs being kind. Therefore, God is delighted with the woman who is wise as opposed to one who is foolish, ill-tempered, quick to judge, and does not make the decisions that are in the best interest for everyone involved. We are obligated to demonstrate this quality not only through our deeds, but also via the words that come out of our mouths. Nothing unpleasant should be intimate from any of our lips. The following is what verse 30 of the same chapter says, Charm is deceptive, but beauty is fleeting. But a woman who fears the Lord is to be praised. To put it more simply, a woman's appearance changes over time, but a woman who trusts in God and lets Him lead in her life is respected in God's eyes. So, we need to look at our habits, tendencies, priorities, and way of living. We need to look at ourselves in all of these ways to make sure we fit God's idea of what a godly woman is and not our own. In the Proverbs we talked about, it says that a woman pleases God and is righteous in His eyes. But we can learn more by learning about some of the other important women in the Bible. There are many good women in the Bible, but I'd like to highlight Queen Esther, who stood out because of how selfless and strong she was and how she handled herself. In chapter 3 of the book Esther, we learn that Haman had written an order to kill all the Jews. Then, in chapter 4, we see how sorrowful Esther is. After hearing this news and talking with Mordecai for a long time, she made a righteous and noble choice that would save her people from death and destruction in the near future. She told Mordecai to gather all the Jews in Shushan and tell them to fast for three days just like she and her servants would do. Then she told him she was going to talk to the king, even though it was against the law and could lead her to being put to death. She did it anyway. Talk about being selfless, having courage, and putting all your faith in God. The king liked her because of how wise and noble she was. Because of this, the king decided to cancel the law against the Jews. Esther has a lot to teach all of us women. Mary, Martha's sister, is another admirable woman we read about. She was willing to give up things for other people and put her trust in God, who was in charge. The chapter takes us into their home, where Martha is making food to serve Jesus while Mary seats at his feet and listens to what he has to say. Martha has been complaining that Mary has left her to do the serving work by herself. Jesus told her in verse 41 that Mary had chosen the good part that couldn't be taken away. Jesus tells Martha that listening to his words is more important than just doing things the right way. As women, it is easy for us to get caught up in the needs of this world, which can easily take our attention away from God. We should always be aware of where our attention is, and if it's not on God, we should turn back to him and listen to what he's trying to tell us. Mary, the mother of Jesus, who was blessed among women by the angel and is exceedingly favorably mentioned by God, is last but certainly not the least. Gabriel's visit and his declaration to her and that she would become pregnant with the world savior, in Luke chapter 1 verse 38 she replied, "I am the Lord's servant," Mary answered. May your word to me be fulfilled. Then the angel left her. She not only submitted to God by referring to herself as the maid servant of the Lord, but she also showed absolute obedience to him, accepting his will and purpose for life. Now that we are aware of the qualities of a godly woman, I encourage you to recognize your value in your identity as a daughter of God. No matter where you are in life, no matter what your status in society, no matter what your job title is or anything else, 
we must strive to be humble and to be obedient to God. These qualities can be worn and shown like priceless diamonds, adorning women with true godly beauty and bringing God praise and honor in your daily lives.